cerebellar circuitry consists of three layers in cerebral cortex then there are four deep cerebellar nuclei and there are five types of cells which are present in the cerebellar cortex so let us see what are these uh, layers nuclei and cells and how they are interconnected so first of all let us see the layers of the cerebellar cortex so there is outer molecular layer okay outer molecular layer then there is a middle purkinje layer this middle layer is purkinje layer and uh, innermost there is granular layer so three layers of the cerebellar cortex and these different layers have different cells so how to remember that is that uh, granular layer has cells which start uh, by the alphabet g so there is a granule cells there are granule cells and there are golgi cells in a granular layer has granule cells and golgi cells middle purkinje layer as the name suggests purkinje it has purkinje cells purkinje cells and then the outer molecular layer has again two cells that is the basket cells and stellate cells basket cells and stellate cells then deep within the cerebellum we have a deep cerebellar nuclei and uh, there are four cerebellar nuclei and what are these these are uh, fastigial nuclei emboliform nuclei globose nuclei and there is dentate nuclei so they are present uh, deep within the cerebellum now let us see what are the connections in the cerebellum circuit so first of all there are two types of inputs which are coming into the cerebellum these inputs include uh, mossy fibers and the other one is the climbing fibers and uh, these climbing fibers are basically from inferior olivary nucleus and they are carrying the error signal rest all the other input is coming from the mossy fibers so all the different tracks which we say that they enter into the cerebellum they form the mossy fibers and the error signal from the inferior olivary nucleus is being carried by the climbing fibers now these mossy and uh, climbing fibers they act on deep cerebellar nuclei in two ways one is directly they are going to excite deep cerebellar nuclei so see i am putting excitatory connection between the mossy fibers and climbing fibers with the deep cerebellar nuclei then they act on purkinje cells also but uh, you see purkinje cells actually inhibit deep cerebellar nuclei so these climbing and mossy fibers are excitatory they excite deep cerebellar nuclei also and they excite purkinje cells also but purkinje cells are inhibitory so how they excite actually purkinje cells have uh, dendrites which extend into the outer molecular layer and these climbing fibers they ascend and make excitatory connections with the dendrites of the purkinje cells so again they excite the purkinje cells mossy fibers on the other hand they excite the granule cells okay and why are granule cells they excite the purkinje cells but they excite number of purkinje cells okay so actually the exons of the granule cells see mossy fibers make connection with the dendrites of the granule cells and the exons of the granule cell this kind of divides okay and this forms the parallel fibers in the outer molecular layer okay and then these parallel fibers make connections with many purkinje cells so here also uh, other purkinje cells will be there so climbing fibers make connections with the multiple dendrites of a single purkinje cell however granule cells make connections with many purkinje cells and what it will be again it will be excitatory so simple remember mossy fibers and climbing fibers they excite deep cerebellar nuclei and they excite purkinje cells also climbing fibers excite directly while mossy fibers excite via granule cells the purkinje cells but you see purkinje cell is actually inhibiting the deep cerebellar nuclei right so what is this known as this is known as inner excitatory loop 
inner excitatory loop because the input is directly exciting the deep cerebellar nuclei and this part is known as outer inhibitory loop outer inhibitory loop why inhibitory because it is indirectly inhibiting the deep cerebellar nuclei by exciting the Purkinje cells so that is known as outer inhibitory loop so this is the fundamental basic circuitry how the input fibers are acting on the cerebellar nuclei but we said that there are other cells also there are Golgi cells which are presented in a granular layer then um, there are basket and stellate cells which are present in outer molecular layer what is their role well granule cells you see they are the excitatory cells they are going to excite all the cells so they have excited the Purkinje cells they will also excite the basket cells and they are also going to excite the stellate cells plus also the Golgi cells so granule cells are exciting all the cells Purkinje cells basket cells stellate cell and Golgi cells but these three cells that is the basket cell stellate and Golgi cells are going to inhibit the other cells so let me just draw it what happens actually this Golgi cell inhibits granule cells so what is this this is a feedback inhibition of granule cell okay feedback inhibition occurring of the granule cell then this basket and stellate cell they also inhibit the granule cells okay so again there is feedback inhibition of the granule cells also this basket and stellate cells they inhibit the Purkinje cells also okay they are going to inhibit the Purkinje cells also and this is known as feed forward inhibition feed forward inhibition why you see Golgi cell is exciting the Purkinje cell but via basket and stellate cell it is inhibiting the Purkinje cell so initially by the mossy fibers via the granule cells Purkinje cells will be excited but then there will be inhibition of the Purkinje cells because of this basket cell and stellate cell action and uh, because of this connection we get the damping action of the cerebellum damping action that means the movement will be initiated but it will be dampened within a short period of time so that is the damping action so this is the basic about the uh, cerebellum circuit uh, just quickly we will revise three layers outer molecular layer with basket and stellate cells middle Purkinje layer with Purkinje cells and inner granule layer granular layer that is the with granule and Golgi cells then four nuclei are there that is the deep cerebellar nuclei which are presented deep within the cerebellum and five cells what are these five cells granule cells Golgi cells Purkinje cells basket and stellate cells then input is brought about by mossy and climbing fibers which directly excite deep cerebellar nuclei so that is forming the inner excitatory loop and indirectly they inhibit the deep cerebellar nuclei via the Purkinje cell so this is basically an MCQ the Purkinje cell output is inhibitory okay while the deep cerebellar output is always excitatory so how much excitatory input is going to go from the deep cerebellar nuclei that is being decided by the amount of the excitation of the deep cerebellar nuclei then we have uh, further complications here granule cell is excitatory always excitatory to all the cells but it is itself inhibited by the Golgi cells basket cells and stellate cells that is the feedback inhibition and basket cell and stellate cells further cause inhibition of the Purkinje cells that is the feed forward inhibition and uh, this circuitry though complex it is very important for MBBS first year exams also and very important for MCQs also so this is one MCQ that um, deep cerebellar output is excitatory this is one mcq okay then feedback inhibition is also an mcq both these feedback inhibition is mcq granule cell is excitatory again an mcq okay and then feed forward inhibition again this is an mcq then yes here also parallel fibers are formed by which cell again this is an mcq it is the granule cell exons which form the parallel fibers so that's all for cerebellum circuit thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you